As we gather for worship, imagine what can happen if your life is a blessing to all people, including people whom you find difficult and unpleasant. Pray that your worship this evening will be used by God to motivate you to live that kind of life blessed and blessing. Bless, for to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. Thy 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a peace at last. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to herald your love in the morning. Our psalm for this evening is Psalm 32. The psalmist describes us. We are blessed by the forgiveness God gives for Jesus' sake. Blessed is the one who transgression is forgiven. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. Many are the woes of the wicked. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our reading this evening is from Mark chapter 15, verses 1 to 20, a reading from our Lord's Passion. Early in the morning after forming a plan, the chief priests with the elders and the experts in the law and the whole Sanhedrin tied Jesus up, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he replied, You say so. Then the chief priests began to accuse him repeatedly. So Pilate asked him again, Have you nothing to say? See how many charges they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. During the feast, it was customary to release one prisoner to the people, whomever they requested. A man named Barabbas was imprisoned with rebels who had committed murder during an insurrection. Then the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to release a prisoner for them, as was his custom. So Pilate asked them, Do you want me to release the king of the Jews for you? for he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas instead. So Pilate, sp Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you want me to do with the one you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! 
Pilate asked them why, what has he done wrong? But they shouted more insistently, Crucify him! Because he wanted to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas for them. Then after he had Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. So the soldiers led him into the place, that is, the governor's residence, and called together the whole cohort. They put a purple cloak on him, and after braiding a crown of thorns, they put it on him. They began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff, and they spit on him. Then they knelt down and paid homage to him. When they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. love unknown my Savior's love to me love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be oh who am I that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die Salvation to bestow, but such disdain, so few that longed for Christ would know. But oh, my friend, my friend indeed, who at my need his life did spend. Sometimes they strew his way And his sweet praises sing Resounding all the day Hosannas to their King Then crucify his other breath And for his death they thirst my Lord done what makes this rage and spite he made the lame to run he gave the blind their sight sweet injuries yet they had these themselves displeased and against my friend in her sweet praise 
I all my days could gladly spend First Peter 3, verses 8 through 17. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless, for to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. For whoever desires to love and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are upon open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now who is there to harm you if you are a zealous for doing good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, then for doing evil. Have you ever had the feeling that life would be fine if it weren't for people? I suspect we all have. Look at the people Jesus is willing to deal with, and you see that compared to Jesus, we come up short. For example, take the night before Jesus died. First, Jesus gathered with his own people, with the disciples in the upper room. He gave them his last words, words of love and service, and then gave them his supper. We disciples gather together in church as well. So far, so good. Then, that night before he died, Jesus did something else that you and I also do. He prayed earnestly in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed, didn't pray about some ethereal, pie-in-the-sky religious themes. He prayed about here and now suffering that his enemies were about to bring upon him. Don't you also take your real-world troubles and trials to your Heavenly Father? Don't you pour out the trouble that so-and-so causes you? We're still with you, Jesus. But then did Jesus did something that you and I aren't always so willing to do. He went out to meet his enemies. Rise, let us go, let us be going so to see my betrayer is at hand he says in Mark 14. Now our Lord is leading us disciples out of our comfort zone. We tend to associate with people we like and who think who we think like us. Our friends on Facebook are usually people like us. We socialize with people who usually look like us and tend to think like us. We visit websites and blogs that are compatible with the way we see things. But when Jesus' mission takes him to the people who will hang him out to die, we start to back off. But that's Jesus' way. Jesus' way should be our way. Listen to what St. Peter says in tonight's sermon text. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless, for to this you were called that you may obtain a blessing. Peter himself had to learn to deal with those who wanted nothing to do with Jesus, people who even killed Jesus and would persecute Jesus' followers. To do good to those who wrong you must have been a hard message for the Christians to whom Peter wrote. They were slandered and shunned, and persecution wasn't far off just shortly after Peter wrote this letter. 
Would they understand what we mean when we say, life would be okay if it weren't for people? You bet they would. But you and I have blessings to give, and God promises to bless us for being blessings to others. Peter says, Bless, for to this you were called, and that you may obtain a blessing. What are the blessings we should bestow on others? Listen again to the qualities Peter lists. Have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. Then Peter backs up what he says with a quotation from Psalm 34. The quotation starts, Whoever desires to love life and see good days. Is there any one of us that doesn't want to love life and see good days? Then Psalm 34 lists ways you and I can be blessings to others. Don't say cruel things or tell lies. Do what is right. Pursue peace. Obey the Lord. Trust that the Lord hears your prayers. Trust that those who do evil do not have the Lord's favor. There are all sorts of ways in this psalm and from Peter by which we can bless other people. Let me sum them all up in this way. Imagine that those people out there, those people who are different than you and sometimes can be difficult, imagine that they are saying to you and me, Don't tell me what a friend I have in Jesus until I see what a friend I have in you. If you do good to all people but sometimes don't feel the love, don't lose heart. God's promise is still true. When you are zealous to do good, you will inherit a blessing. So what's the promised blessing? What awaits us as we actively do good to others? Listen to this quotation from the German Lutheran theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I remember a conversation that I had in America 13 years ago with a young French pastor. We were asking ourselves quite simply what we wanted to do with our lives. And he said he would like to become a saint. And I think it's quite likely that he did become one. At the time I was very impressed, but I disagreed with him and said, in effect, that I should like to learn to have faith. I discovered later, and I'm still discovering right up to this moment, that it is only by living completely in this world that one learns to have faith. One must completely abandon any attempt to make something of oneself, whether it be a saint or a converted sinner or a churchman, so-called priestly type, a righteous man or an unrighteous one, a sick man or a healthy one. By this worldliness, I mean living unreservedly in life's duties, problems, successes, and failures, experiences, and perplexities. And when we do, we throw ourselves completely into the arms of God, taking seriously not our own sufferings, but those of God in the world, watching with Christ in Gethsemane. That, I think, is faith. That is metanoia, the Greek word for repentance. And that is how one comes a man and a Christian. May God in his mercy lead us through these times, but above all, may he lead us to himself. Dietrich Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote these in his book, Letters and Papers from Prison. Why was he in prison? Because he was part of the plot to assassinate Hitler. The blessing that comes from doing good to hard people in a hard situation is that God is leading us to deeper faith in himself. What greater blessing can we have than that? Throwing ourselves into the sufferings of this world shows us our utter dependence upon our Savior. What you don't wall off your what you don't wall yourself off. When you don't wall yourself off, when you see how hurting and hopelessly so many people live, When you realize that you're very much a part of this fallen humanity, then you'll cry out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Blessing those who are not kind to you is Christ-like. As Bonhoeffer says, we throw ourselves completely into the arms of God, taking seriously not our own sufferings, but those of God in the world, watching with Christ in Gethsemane. 
Don't tell me what a friend I have in Jesus until I see what a friend I have in you. Make your life a blessing to others and you will obtain the blessing from of deeper faith in God. Would life really be that great if it weren't for people? It's people, people like us, and people different than us, people good and people bad, people sinners and people saints. It's all kinds of people that drive us to God. When you make your life a life of blessing to others, it may happen that someone wants to know why you are the way you are. St. Peter tells us, In your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience. Won't that be wonderful when someone sees what a friend they have in you and give you an opportunity to tell them about what a friend they have in Jesus? Whether that happens or not, you will be blessed. God is calling us home. And in the midst of people, sometimes in the messy midst of people, we are following Jesus to inherit a blessing. Amen. No heart.
Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. 